Mark, let's talk about the broad markets in three minutes then and bro broaden our conversation. We've dealt with China a little bit there. Let's broaden the conversation a bit and add in the Japanese dynamic. Uh, dynamic. We've seen a really weak auction. I know Paul has been writing about this. He found 10 takeaways from the weakness of this auction in Japan. And some people are, on your team have been writing about how this has global messaging, global implications about the dangers of high supply and low demand. What are we seeing in the, uh, in the Japanese bond market? Anna, I'm allowed to phone a friend. Surely we should bring Paul back into this. As you said, he's done a great piece in this. But absolutely, look, look I think there is concern about this auction. There's this great size and scope that it's the longest tail since 1987 for the auction there. And it, it does show that there's kind of a worry that maybe the yield curve control adjustment that we saw at the last meeting might be the precursor to a greater change. Now, I think this is really interesting because it was only this week that we were kind of observing that some of the speculation around imminent change in further policy from the Bank of Japan had actually dampened a little bit. And certainly economists had pushed back their projections until next year and there wasn't an expectation that we'll get another rapid change. I think that's a mistake. I think it's a folly in the context that macro-wise we are seeing US yields continue to provide a lot of upward pressure. We're starting to see that inflation dynamic stickiness come back in. We're likely to see that with national CPI print tomorrow, Tokyo inflation next week, that inflation mm. in Japan is stickier and we're getting pretty good economic data out of Japan as well. So I actually think that the market should still be focused on further policy change in the next couple of months from the Bank of Japan. And I think that auction today reflects that. OK, we're seeing yields go higher. Uh, th this is a global story, but very much the Treasury uh, market in focus here. So yields continue to go higher on Treasuries this morning. Is this a read across from what some perceived as hawkish minutes from the Federal Reserve? Uh, did anything change in your view in that regard? I don't think the minutes changed loads. Uh, I think, you know, we, we, it was kind of pretty consistent with the prior meeting. So I don't think there was a big shock there. I think the fact is the data continues to be strong and people are nervous going to Jackson Hole. You know, the, uh, about a month ago, there was a debate, would Jackson Hole be the moment when Powell will declare victory over inflation and kind of flag that, yeah, OK, we're kind of basically at the end of the cycle. Not getting into quibble of whether there's another rate hike or not. He would never pre-commit to being firmly at the end, but signal that, like, yeah, I think we're, we're confident we're on top of this. And, and, and suddenly over the last month, people are going, there's no way he's going to do that, given the data we've seen. He, he again, is not going to commit to a bunch of extra hikes, but he is not going to declare victory. And so I think that's everyone's preparing, positioning for the fact that Jackson Hole definitely will not be a dovish message. And that's what we're seeing in the yield dynamic okay. at the moment. <laughs> OK, so the market focuses on the hawkishness that we could hear there and yields are going higher. But at the same time, the San Francisco Fed putting some research in our inboxes, which talks about how excess savings for U.S. consumers could be depleted by the third quarter. I wonder if that changes the conversation. I, look, I love this piece. There's so many different studies on excess savings that it's hard to get the concrete number. I like this one because it fits my own narrative that the consumer runs out of savings in the third quarter, which means we can still get the fourth quarter, late fourth quarter, start of the recession that I'm calling for, which means you should be looking for a peak in the stock market in the third quarter. 